Hey all, welcome back to Microbial Concepts. So this is a video on basic immunology where we will be discussing about normal flora and three lines of defense. Okay, this is very, very basic video on immunology and it is especially for first year BSc microbiology students, okay, who are new to the course of microbiology. Right, so let's so first, what is immunology? So it is a branch of science that deals with the study of immune system of an organism. Okay, so each and every organism has its own immune system. Now the immune system is one that uh, helps in fighting back a infection. Okay, or a pathogen that invades that particular organism. So that is the immune system and the study of this immune system is immunology. Okay, that is logy means the study and immune immuno it stands for the immune system okay so the immune system so what is immune system it is a system that comprises of organs cells and tissues or some processes that actively fight infection by working together okay so a immune system it comprises of what organs cells tissues and some processes okay so that is the immune system now we had uh, learned about the basic two terms here now let's move further now we know that bacteria are ubiquitous means they are present everywhere now yes even on our body there are many bacteria which dwell okay that means they uh, live on our body okay body surface like for example skin the hum human body it contains trillions of micro okay so that's the reason why immunology has this uh, topic and it is included in the syllabus because it is very important and it covers the basis of the um, immune system and the three lines of defense and the normal flora is something that you will learn when you go to your third year and even in your masters okay the revision is done of these topics and then you move further in your course now about the normal flora now what is normal flora so normal flora is the term which is used to describe the various bacteria and fungi or fungi that are permanent residents of our certain body sites okay now which body sites then skin they it covers skin oropharynx and colon and vagina okay now viruses and parasites which are the other major group of microorganisms they usually they are not considered the members of normal flora okay they are not considered the members of normal flora but in case of some individuals who are infected or uh, even if a person is infected but does not show or it uh, or he or she don't have any symptoms the person or the patient is considered as a symptomatic individual in those cases also you can find the viruses and parasites but they are not considered as the normal flora okay do remember the normal flora organisms are often referred to as commensals now commensals is the term which is used for the normal flora organisms okay commensals are the organisms that derive benefit from another host but do not damage the host you i hope you got the meaning here the commensals they are the organism that get they try to derive the benefits or they try to get the benefits from the host but they do not damage the host okay now these are some examples so members of normal flora are given here and the anatomic location that means the where uh, at which body site they reside okay so for examples you can see here candida albicans you find candida albicans in mouth colon and vagina then clostridium species in colon then uh, coronibacteria or coronibacterium species of say diphtheroid it is found in uh, nasosparing skin and vagina again you can see here hemophilus species uh, they are generally found in nasospharynx and conjunctiva okay then propineobacterium acne the one which causes acne on our face or the skin uh, it is located or it is found on our skin then staphylococcus aureus in nose and skin on skin then staphylococcus epidermidis again skin nose mouth vagina and urethra okay then veridin group of streptococci they are found in mouth and in nasopharynx okay so these are the examples try to remember at least five to six of them with their anatomic location so now about the skin 
the predominant member of the normal flora of the skin is Staphylococcus epidermidis. Okay, very very commonly found that is, and predominant that is in more numbers. The Staphylococcus epidermidis is the member that is found in normal flora of our skin. It is important. It is an important cause of infections of prosthetic heart valves and prosthetic joints. Okay, now Candida albicans uh, yeast, which is also found on the skin, can enter the bloodstream and it can cause disseminated infections such as endocarditis in intravenous drug users. Okay, now these are the normal uh, skin flora or uh, the examples, but when they get enter in your body, they can cause infections. Okay. Now the S aureus is also present on the skin, but its main site is in the nose. Okay. And it causes abscesses in the skin and in many other organs. In case of oropharynx, the main member of the normal flora of the mouth and the throat. Okay. This is what the oropharynx it covers. They are the viridans group of streptococci such as Streptococcus sang uh, sanguinis and Streptococcus mutans. Now, viridans group of Streptococci, they are the most common cause of subacute endocarditis. Okay. Now, if you are wondering what is the endocarditis, then it is an infection of heart's inner lining, which usually involves the heart valves. Okay. So, the next is about the normal flora from gastrointestinal tract. The stomach contains very few organisms because of the low pH. Okay, the reason is very few microbes they can tolerate the acidic pH. Okay, that's the reason. Very few number of microbes they are found in stomach. The colon contains the largest number of normal flora and mostly they are the diverse species. Okay, including both anaerobic and facultative bacteria. Now you will find both gram positive, gram negative rods and cocci and the members of the colonic normal flora. They are an important cause of diseases outside of the colon. Okay, the two most important members of this colonic flora that causes diseases are anaerobic bacteroides species and a facultative E. coli. Now enterococcus faecalis is also a facultative uh, microbe and is also a very important pathogen from the gastrointestinal tract. Now vagina. In case of vagina, the lactobacilli, they play a very important role as they are predominant normal flora, which uh, you will find they grow uh, luxuriously in vagina. Why? Because they help in maintaining the pH low. Okay. Why low pH is needed to be maintained? Because it inhibits the growth of candida albicans, which is an important causative uh, agent of vaginitis. Okay, a very important pathogen which causes vaginitis. Now, in case of urethra, the outer third of the urethra contains a mixture of bacteria, which is uh, Staphylococcus epidermidis, and the female urethra can become colonized with the fecal flora such as E. coli, which predisposes to urinary tract infections. So this was about the common body sites which reside the normal flora. So we have seen some examples and even the, the um, infections which they can cause if they come in contact or if they get entered in the host. Okay, opportunistic um, pathogens. Now let's start about the three lines of defense. Okay, now our immune system can be divided into three basic lines of defense against pathogenic infection. Okay, so please pay attention. The first line of defense against infection are the surface barriers. Okay, that prevent the entry of pathogens into the body. The example is skin. The second line of defense are the non-specific phagocytes and other internal mechanisms that comprise the innate immunity. Okay, that means the innate immunity is the one which comes under second line of defense. The third line of defense are the specific lymphocytes, okay, cells that produce antibodies as a part of adaptive immune response. Okay, so when an unknown pathogen enters 
and your body is not aware of how to fight it the lymphocytes they produce antibodies to capture that particular pathogen and then trigger some uh, reactions so that the pathogen or the pathogenic cell it gets destroyed okay so that's the third line of defense now let's go in detail so the first line of defense the primary defense against the infectious in infectious disease are the surface barriers that prevent pathogen from entering the body now example is intact skin okay protect external boundary and mucous membrane that protects the internal brown boundaries okay for example inside our nose the mucous membrane it protects the um, entry it protects us from the entry of these uh, pathogens both the skin and the mucous membranes release chemical secretions which restrict the growth of microbes on our surface okay now if a pathogen it cannot enter the host body then they cannot disturb the normal physiological functions and they can cause uh, disease okay so simply uh, if a pathogen cannot enter the host body because of the first line of defense then there will be no disease or no infection so you can see here non specific defense under that you will find the first line defense and second line defense in case of specific defense you will find adaptive immunity which covers the third line of defense okay there is the difference now let's see the first line of defense examples are skin mucous membrane secretion on the skin and mucous membranes second line of defense covers the phagocytic leukocytes antimicrobial proteins and inflammatory response and fever that we observe okay or we consider it as a symptom then third line of defense which covers cells like lymphocytes then antibodies and memory cells okay now this is a simple uh, pictorial uh, representation here which i guess is uh, quite helpful to understand what we are learning here so the first line of defense you can see the skin cell it acts as a barrier and it prevents the entry of a pathogen okay intact skin if there is a cut or a wound on your skin then a pathogen can easily enter your blood stream that's the reason why you have to write intact skin in case of first line of defense when you give skin as an example the second line of defense you can see the general response to a infection is given okay so who comes in the picture the phagos phagocytic leukocyte you will learn about a phagocytic cell how it works okay just remember for now that a phagocyte is a cell which comes into the picture when there is a general response to be given for a infection okay then a third line of defense where immunity against a specific pathogen is to be developed okay that means to catch a particular pathogen seriously the immune system it requires something special okay so the antibodies the lymphocytes they come into the picture and even a memory cells come so what happens if in future if the same pathogen invades the memory cells they get activated and they know how to kill that particular pathogen or what response is to be given okay that's about the third line okay let's revise again so the first line of defense no specific uh, sorry non specific na natural barriers which restrict the entry of pathogen example skin and mucus in case of second line of defense there is innate non specific immune defense which is pro which is provided and it is rapid lo uh, lo local response to a pathogen after it has entered the host okay so that is uh, yeah second line of defense it, the response is very very rapid and at a local level it is non specific okay the phagocytic cell will not uh, keep on looking whether i know this pathogen or not it will just do its work of killing and neutralizing the pathogen now examples are here fever that is a, uh, because of the response the uh, heat is released and it uh, it is what we uh, observe as and we consider it as a symptom that is fever okay then phagocytes uh, under which it comes uh, macrophages and neutrophils then inflammation and interferons third line of defense is where antigen specific immune response specifically target and attack the invaders that get past first two lines of defense okay so this particular pathogen will 
a pathogen will get uh, or uh, yeah a pathogen will encounter the third line of defense only when it has escaped the first line and second line okay then only it has entered and it has spread it has started multiplying and this has triggered the immune system okay or a signal is sent to the immune system that yes the somebody or a foreign particle is inside the body and the immune system needs to fight back and neutralize it okay that's how our immune system works now about the second line of defense the second line of defense we have seen um, against infection it is non specific and cellular at the cellular level that means the cells like phagocytic cells macrophages and neutrophils they come into the picture okay and a molecular response of innate immune system is given these defenses they do not differentiate between different types of pathogens and the response and respond the same way upon every infection okay they don't keep on differentiating and recognizing where, whether this pathogen has um, previously invaded or not okay the system will just um, respond quickly saying that this is the invader and i have to neutralize it phagocytic leukocyte they migrate to the infected or infectious site and they engulf okay the cell engulfs the foreign body that is the dendritic cells then present the antigen to the lymphocytes and the uh, cascade the reaction it takes place further now the inflammatory responses increase the capillary permeability at infected site recruiting the leukocytes but leading the localized swelling antimicrobial proteins such as cytokines and complement proteins they regulate the immune activity within the body fever increases the body temperature to activate the heat shock proteins and suppresses the microbial growth and propagation okay as the optimum temperature for um, the pathogens is 37 35 to 37 degree celsius that is our uh, human body temperature in case of fever the temperature rises and what happens it suppresses the microbial growth and propagation that's the reason why even um, it is said that you got the fever that means it is okay you are getting rid of the infection okay then the third line of defense the final line of defense against infection are given by the lymphocytes that produce antibodies to specific antigen fragments okay so antigen and antibody reactions they are very very specific like lock and key model so to a particular specific antigen particular antibodies are released by the cells okay so each b cell produces a specific antibody and the body has millions of different b cells capable of detecting distinct antigens okay that's the reason why even if we, we get a new um, pathogen Uh, in the environment which is infectious and if it gets invaded uh, to a host system then the cells are able to neutralize it okay the helper t cell regulates b cell activation ensuring that antibodies are only mass produced at the appropriate times both b and t cells they differentiate to form memory cells after activation and conferring the long term immunity to the particular pathogen okay so now this is something very detail you may find this difficult but uh, this is what you will be learning next when it comes in detail in your course okay so for first year students just remember that there are cells like b cells t cells b cells are one which uh, uh, differentiate in bone marrow and t cells are one which differentiate and mature in the thymus that's the reason why they are named as b cell and t cell okay so these are the uh, this is actually a very vast topic uh, so just remember about the cells here and how they work okay so we have covered the first line second line third line defense and the normal skin flora in this video so i hope the basics of immunology are clear to you Thank you for watching my video do like my video share my video with your friends and do subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon thank you